how you can use simple algebra to solve for missing numbers and equations. A vocabulary word that you probably need to know is the word variables. A variable is any unknown quantity in an equation. Often it's represented as a letter, so you might see x, y, n, sometimes it'll be a question mark, a blank line, or even like an empty square. Your goal is to get the variable all by itself and alone on one side of the equation, so you can see what amount it equals on the other side. So here I have an equation with an unknown amount, with a variable. 4 plus 7 equals 5 plus x. First thing I want to do is I want to make it as simple as possible. So this 4 plus 7, I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to actually add that up to, to know what that is. I know that 7 plus 3 is 10, so 7 plus 4 must be 11. So if this is my teeter-totter, I haven't added or subtracted anything to this pile. I just simplified it by putting the two little parts together. So on this side, I have 11. And on this side, it's the same as 5 plus my mystery number. Now I want to get my mystery number all by itself. Because this is like one big kid and two little kids. I can't know how much this kid weighs as long as there's two of them sitting on the teeter-totter. So to get this one alone, I need to get this 5 to get off. So I'm going to subtract 5 from this side. Now to be fair, if I subtracted 5 from one side, if I want to keep my teeter-totter balanced, I need to subtract 5 from this side as well. These two 5s are going to cross each other off, and all I'm left with is my variable. 11 minus 5 is going to give me 6, so I know that this one kid here, this unknown variable x, is going to equal 6. So our answer is that x equals 6. And then you can always plug it back in to double check. We know that 4 plus 7 is 11, 5 plus 6 is 11, so we know we solved it correctly. Let's try another one. 4 plus 3y, which means 3 times y, equals 19. Well, my goal is to get the variable by, variable by itself, to get y all by itself. The first thing I need to do is to try to get it so I just have the 3y together. So I'm going to get rid of 4 off of each side, kick a kid off the teeter-totter, basically. So if I take 4 off of this side, I need to take 4 off of this side as well. Now my two 4s balance out, cross each other out, and I don't know that 19 minus 4 is going to give me 15. So I'm going to cross this off and make this a 15. So that means 3 y's, or 3 times y, is equal to 15. Well, I don't want 3 y's, I only want 1 y. So I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to divide it by 3. So that I'm left with just 1 y by itself. But if I divide this side by 3, to be fair, should divide this side by 3 too. So 3 divided by 3, that equals 1, that gets rid of itself. 5 divided by 3, or, or sorry, 15 divided by 3, if I take 15 and I share it equally into 3 piles, is going to equal 5. So in the end, I found out that y is going to equal 5. I can always go back and double check then by plugging it into my equation. So 4 plus 3 times 5 should equal 19. 3 times 5 is 15. 16, 17, 18, 19. Yep, I solved it correctly. Here I have a tricky problem, even though it doesn't look overly tricky. 12 minus our variable n equals 4. Now before you get rushing off to minus your 12 on both sides, I want you to think about what you would be left over with. If I take 12 over here and 12 off of here, Suddenly I'm going to be left with a negative n, and I don't know how to deal with a negative n yet. Plus, 4 minus 12 isn't very helpful either, because 4 minus 12 is also going to be a negative number. What I would suggest you do is actually move this n by canceling it out on this side. So I'm actually going to add my mystery number n on this side, and since I put n on this side, I should also need to put n on this side as well. If I have a positive n and a negative n, plus n and minus n, those two are actually going to cross each other off. So all I'm left with is 12 equals 4 plus n. Well now I can take the 4 off of this side and take the 4 off of this side as well. And I'm left with just 4 minus 4, which is nothing. So just n on this side, and 12 minus 4 is going to give me 8. So I figured out that n equals 8. And again, you always want to go back and check your work.
Does 12 minus 8 equal 4? Yep, so you know you solved it correctly. Let's try one more together. This is 8 divided by my variable, a question mark in this case, is going to equal 2. Well, before I start dividing by 8 and dividing by 8, you have to think about what you're going to be left with. If I divide by 8, I'm going to be left with divide by question mark. And I don't know how to handle divide by question mark. So just like with that last one, when we had the minus our variable, if you have a minus variable or divide by variable, you actually want to get the variable flipped to the other side. And so to do that, you do the opposite of that function. So when we add minus variable, we added the variable. If we have divide by variable, we're going to multiply by the variable. So I'm going to multiply this side by question mark. And then to be fair, I just need to multiply this side by the question mark as well. I know that when you divide and multiply by the same number, they cancel each other out. So I know that 8 equals 2 times something. Well now, I can solve. If I have 8 equals 2 groups of something, I can divide each side by 2, cut them each in half, and that's going to leave me with whatever one of those things were. So 2 divided by 2 equals 1. I can get rid of all that. 8 divided by 2 is going to equal 4. So I'm guessing that my variable is going to be 4 this time. That question mark equals 4. Always want to go back and double check though. Plug that number in and make sure. Does 8 divided by 4 equal 2? Well sure, if I take 8 and put it into 4 groups, there's going to be 2 in each group. So I have a couple of variables here that I need you to solve for. Go ahead and copy each one of these down and work on solving them. You're probably going to need to pause the video. When you're ready to check your work, you can push play again. Go ahead and pause now. Okay, welcome back. Let's go ahead and see what we can figure out. For this one, the first thing I'd probably do is get that 2 plus 3 out of the way. So I have 5 equals 7 minus x. But I remember that whenever I minus x or divide by x, I'm going to have a problem. So I am actually going to add my x to both sides and get it flipped to the other side. So I'm going to have plus x and plus x so that it balances out. Well, I know minus x plus x, that cancels out. So I know x plus 5 equals 7. Then to get x by itself, I minus 5 and I minus 5. So that must mean that x equals 2. I always go back and double check my work. 2 plus 3 equals 5. 7 minus um, 2 equals 5 as well. I know that I solved it correctly. On this one, I'm saying 6 times something equals 18. Well, plus something and times something are both okay. So all I needed to do on this side was divide, do the opposite of times by 6. 6 divided by 6, that cancels out. 18 divided by 6 equals 3. So I'm guessing my missing variable is going to equal 3. 6 times 3 equals 18, which is exactly what I wanted. So your missing variable equals 3. On this one, the first thing you probably want to do is to get that 6 plus 7 out of your way. Put those together, and so it's one big group. 6 plus 7 equals 13. So 13 is going to equal 9 plus r. I know that plus variable or times variable is just fine. All I need to do now is get that r by itself. To do that, I'm going to minus 9 on each side. 13 minus 9 gives me 4. So I'm guessing that r is going to equal 4. I always go back and double check. 6 plus 7 equals 13. 9 plus 4 equals 13. I know that 4 was indeed the correct answer. Now here's one of those tricky ones. If it's divided by or minus your variable, you know that you have a problem. So I need to flip this around and I need to make it so that instead of divide by r, we're going to multiply each one or each side by times r and actually get it flipped over to the other side so it's not a divide by r anymore. I know that divide by r and times r, oops, that should be an r, sorry about that. Divide by r and times r each cancels out, so those r's can go away. So now I'm left with 5 times r. Well, 25 equals 5 times r. I can divide by 25 or divide by 5 on each side because I want to get that r all by itself. I know that 5 divided by 5 cancels out, and 25 divided by 5 equals 5. So I'm guessing that 5 equals r. 
hopefully you did that with less mistakes than I did. Going back and checking my work, 25 divided by r, so 25 divided by 5 does indeed equal 5, so I know I did it correctly. On this one, the numbers are bigger, but it's the same procedure, and it's a great problem because it's a plus variable, so I, all I have to do is get it by itself. To do that, I'm going to take the 70 part off of both sides. 70 minus 70 cancels out, so I'm left with y all by itself. 120 minus 70 is going to give me 50. So I know that y must equal 50. You always want to go back and double check your work. Does 70 plus 50 equal 120? Yep, because 7 plus 5 equals 12, but it's 7 tens and 5 tens, so we need 12 tens, which is 120. This last one is one of those challenging ones, because remember, you can't do a minus variable. So I need to start by getting the variable flipped to the other side. So I'm going to add p to both sides. Minus p and plus p cancels each other out, so I can get rid of both of those. And I know that 60 is going to equal 20 plus p. Well, now I just need to get p by itself. To do that, I take off the 20 part. And I need to do it to both sides so I'm fair, so everything stays balanced. I know that 60 minus 20 equals 40. So I'm guessing that 40 equals p. I go back and I double check my work. I had 60 minus p equals 20. Does 60 minus 40 equals 20? So you know you've done it correctly. If this is comfortable for you, you can go ahead and move on to your next activity. If not, ask your teacher for more examples or watch this video again. Good luck.